welcome back to another video. Um, I am Melinda J. And I'm here to talk about season two of Cheer on Netflix. Um, what's so crazy about this is that um, I believe it came out on Monday. And I, uh, last Monday, and I was like, mm, I'm gonna wait to to watch it over the weekend. That way I can have it, um, watch it in all sitting. But girl, I should have watched that John, on John Monday. <laughs> so I can join into the conversation on Twitter. But other than that, let's get on to season two of Cheer on Netflix. I got my notes here on my handy dandy clipboard. And um, the highlights, what was it giving? It was giving rookie versus veterans, okay? And also a little bit of bringing on at the same time, uh, especially when it comes to the Trinity Valley uh, Community College and the uh, Navarro College. <coughs> yeah, it was definitely giving rookie versus ve uh, veterans and bringing on at the same time. Um, as I stated in the uh, previous video, Texas is notorious of winning mentality, rightfully so. Um, I definitely do see that, but there are some parts of Texas that just are now just now getting into the football realm and uh, the cheer realm. So yeah, uh, overall, Texas is definitely notorious for a winning mentality. Shouts out for that. Um, Navarro Cheer. Some of the team members um, became influencers. You have Jerry, you have Lexi, you have Ladarius, and of course Gabby. She was already a cheer cheer celebrity um, before she got to Navarro. But yes, oh yeah, and Morgan. Morgan was another one one of those that became influencers. Um, so, of course, agents, when it comes to becoming an influencer, in comes the agents, in comes opening up new doors, new opportunities. Um, and rightfully so, because athletes do need to make money off their names and off their likeness. Because, hello, they the ones that put the work. And, of course, y'all... As companies, y'all want free. Um, y'all want them to advertise for them because they are the it factor. So yes, by all means necessary. All athletes do need to make their coins. So I was definitely happy uh, about that. They were able to make money off their likeness. Um, point number three was um pep talks prayers and every pep talks the prayers before they um do any task here for it okay here for it all the time um another highlight <laughs> another highlight was uh the colon bakery uh scene i don't know if y'all peeped this or not but uh, when the team was doing photos and commercials for the Colin uh, Bakery, there was this uh, black employee that was um, standing uh, in the midst of, in between of going to the back in the factory part and at the front. And he had that look on their face like, what the heck they doing? I mean, cause they were all in like a small little pyramid. Some had a full fruit cake and others had like a piece of cake and stuff like that. Um, so it was definitely good that they were able to collaborate with the uh, town, the small town bakery, Colin Bakery to uh, advertise and promote uh, not only themselves, but also the business as well. Uh, to get more traction, gain more traction to the city, uh, the small town. But um, Gabby's parents, when they came, when they gave the rundown of you got to collaborate because you know it's all about hitting the right moment. Uh, whenever a team or someone gets famous, it's all about collaboration, and I highly agree with them. Them two right there, they a whole organization at, uh, in themselves. 
but I do agree with Gabby's parents that uh, it collaboration is great because it's almost like you scratch your back, I scratch your back type of thing. And who doesn't like to um, make money and gain attraction to their business? So by all means necessary, I do highly agree with that um, collaboration is key when it comes to getting your money, okay? <laughs> um, the award ceremony was virtual um, this time around for season two due to the Rona. So um, I kind of felt bad for the teams not experiencing that uh, stage presence when it comes to like going, coming down to the bottom two of the teams and being named the winner. But overall, um, oh yeah, beware, there are spoilers in this video. So, um, telling you, I should have gave you that before I gave you my highlights. But yes, from this point on, there is going to be some tit, uh, there is going to be some spoilers. So, if you don't, if you have not watched it yet, and you don't want to be spoiled by the spoilers, I highly encourage you to click off right now, okay? <laughs> But overall, yes, the ceremony was virtual due to the fact last year, they were busting their butts last year. Um, no, during 2020, not 2021, but they were still busting their butts then. But um, for the 2020, if I'm not mistaken, or the 2021 um, competition, preparing for that they were they were busting their butts i have to say that and for you know the rona to come and interrupt what um the competition and being able to see if you win or not especially for <coughs> especially for the ones that graduated before um the the competition happened this uh, time around. I really felt bad for them that they weren't able to get that last uh, stage call because of you know what came in the way. But um, health comes over anything. Another pointer that I was a uh, uh, point that I wanted to point out. Another highlight was the emotions y'all emotions emotions make you cry sometimes okay it was definitely giving uh, an emotional season this time and rightfully so because of everything that is going on um mental health um the stop of the the sudden stop of the festivities and the changes that there was going um going on as far as like how to proceed forward with the competition and then um uh let's see what else um and just being there for each other um and as i stated before in the last videos yes parents it is important for us to be showing up for our kids when it comes to everything that they do. Um, the simple things can go a long way when it comes to kids. So um, it was definitely a lot of emotions going on that end. And then for uh, the boys, for the wieners, <laughs> as they call them, as far as like Benji and them, uh, showing emotion towards the end of their uh, choreography, their routine at the competition. I was like, yes, this is what they was. I was like, yes, finally, yes. We got some emotions because um, the cliche when it comes to cheerleading is that, you know, when guys are in cheerleading, a pe of course people are always gonna assume that they're gay and they're not, I mean, if they are good at tumbling, if they're good at, you know, helping girls up off the ground, that way more girls can be able to interact with the crowd. Like, um, there are the most masculine dudes that are on cheer, uh, on cheer teams and, you, and you're better off getting a scholarship when you're um, a male in cheerleading because there's so much high demand for them. 
So if you are a good tumbler and you want to help out with stunts, um, you know, tossing girls in the air and being able to catch them, I highly recommend you guys to just try it out cheerleading and see how far it goes for you because <coughs> that was the thing that they were struggling. They were struggling with... Um, do they have to add more sassiness to the routine or what because they are so masculine in their own nature and and rightfully so but at the same time when it comes to the judges judging you on the uh while you are on the stage performing an act um for the cheer routine you got to show some emotion even if it's just a you know just a mm, you know you got to show that emotion and so forth them three to show emotion um periodically through the routine i was here for it yes i was like yes y'all getting it and they have become a little bit more open they hello the icebreaker they are a little bit more um uh subtle now they were subtle before but they're a little bit more um interactive now and you can and their parents see the difference so Woo, woo, on that end um there was also another highlight was the watermelon cleanse i've never done the watermelon cleanse before um i do love watermelon but uh when gabby was giving tidbits about the watermelon cleanse i was like well you know that makes sense because watermelon is mostly water so um and it's a water food so if you don't drink a whole lot of water but you like eating fruits strawberries watermelon cucumber tomatoes um they those are water fruits especially um uh asparagus asparagus i think asparagus has more water content than watermelon even though it's a vegetable asparagus has does has more water content than um watermelon say for all those non-water drinkers out there you know continue to drink more water because your body is mostly water but um you can also eat water foods that contain a lot of water content um to be able to balance it out so i thought that was an interesting tidbit um next highlight was tvc winning the championship girl i was like yes because um, they stated in the first episode that Navarro had two chances <coughs> to do the routine. And I think you have two chances, one one day and one another day. Um, and one of the uh, one of the TBCC um, teammate, teammates had said that Navarro had got two chances because uh one of the members had got hurt on stage tumbling like he landed it wrong landed wrong and when i went back and watched season one before i watched season two i didn't realize that they were showing this particular person that the tvcc uh person was talking about who got injured i did see the cameraman like it was like and I'm like, why they keep showing this dude? Even though the dude was the dude that was injured, the Navarro cheerleader that was injured at the time. Um, I was like, why they keep showing him? You know, because he was cheering on a team, rightfully so. Um, but they just kept showing him. And I'm like, they were showing him um supporting the team right rightfully so and when the team end um their routine that there was a guy to pick him up and they were still showing him then and i'm like but what are y'all trying to tell us and i guess that was the reason so i thought that was pretty interesting there um another highlight was the ladarius and monica convo uh towards the end it was very heartbreaking um when you are a coach you do have the parental figure whenever the parents are not there to watch their kids and 
I felt that was the right thing for them to do was to have a conversation and have that heart to heart so they can close out and be able to close that chapter out and be able to move forward. Um, so yeah, <coughs> even though, even though she was like concerned on why he came to the competition to support them, um, they still made their due diligence to come back to each other, have a one on one and be able to resolve the issue and be able to move forward from them. So I did appreciate that aspect. Um, another highlight was the guys getting pedicures. Now, guys, it's okay to get pedicures because the reason why I had to, I had this realiza realization whenever I started going to the nail salon frequently because I'm like, why do women spend a lot of time in the nail salon? You know, getting Medicare, pedicures and stuff because I, w I would always get my feet done at home. Um, I will always do my feet at home. But now that I know, and it's part of self-care, and that's what I do my content off is self-care. It is part of self-care. And whether you know it or not, your organs are, um, are attached or they are in coexisting with your feet so it's important that you can it's okay to go to the nail salon and get your manicure and pedicure going on because that's bringing self-care and awareness to you and rewarding yourself and your body and um the people in the nail salon they're able to get those nicks and cricks and um and you can tell and most of the time they will tell you um what is going on with you based off the motions that they're going through your feet and stuff. So yeah, I was here for the guys getting pedicures because they are on their feet all day long practicing. And I was here for the guys giving themselves self care in that realm. So shout out to you guys. Um, Another highlight was Dawson and Brad going toe to toe with the choreography. like. Um, Brad was the choreographer Navarro at one point in time, and he went over to the TVCC to help out with the choreography. So I thought that was interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. And Brad is um, considered the mentor, and Dawson was like the mentee. So that was another aspect of the rookie versus re uh, veteran realm um, of the overall aspect of season two because it was like battle of the choreographer so i was like what shut your mouth and then um when production had mentioned it to mr bill smith about brad going to tvcc he was like i was not aware of that <laughs> I, I was like what how what you didn't know so i i thought that was interesting um Another highlight was Chris Franklin. Um, he was the head coach of TVCC from my from my understanding from 2011 to 2017. And on season two, mostly he was the assistant coach part time. And at the end of the season, he got promoted to full time. He was he's full time in co-signing uh, uh, co along with coach uh, Vontae. So I thought that was that was good on that end. Um, and another highlight was discipline. The discipline, the stunts, the tumbling, and the condition. Now what I have to say about the conditioning part <coughs> as well as discipline. It is important as an athlete Y'all don't know how important, unless you're an athlete yourself, you don't know how important conditioning is until you are doing complicated, complex stuff, okay? So it's important to work on the agility, uh, the endurance, the stamina, and eating well, and resting. Um, 
getting enough sleep because that's important for not only a cheer body but also um also an athletic body in general because whenever you um trying to push your body to the limit you have to condition yourself to be able to push your body to the limit because if not you are going to be worn out and you're just going to be grasping for air every time so yes with all being said conditioning whether you know it or not stretching whether you know it or not whether you want to do it correctly or not it is important are you going to end up straining um or tearing up a, a ligament or something because of the fact that you did not stretch and you did not condition properly and that's one thing that that did get on my nerves when i was in cheerleading at one point in time people didn't know the importance of stretching before an activity because of the fact of the matter you can tear something in the midst of doing a complicated um stunt uh tumbling anything so yes for all those athletes out there i highly encourage you to take conditioning and discipline yourself to condition um effectively because it is important that's how coaches are able to to determine whether or not you are able and capable of executing the job effectively so yes athletes take conditioning seriously unpopular opinion um <laughs> i did see some of the comments on twitter about jada my unpopular unpopular opinion about jada i can relate to jada because she wants to win and when you've been on a team where you've constantly been losing and you know your team can do better of course you going to step into that leadership position and be like hey get a grip let's take this seriously let's get this work done so we can be able to crush the competitor at the end so <coughs> let me get a drink of water um so the major butterfly effect that did happen with jada was and she stated this um in the series she was like before i was hardcore i was trying to you know get it get it get it get it get it get it but towards the end whenever the rona had came around uh, came about and being isolated from everybody and it's taken on your mental because you're so used to being around with each other constantly 24 7 and for you to not be able to interact with your peers um, on a day to day basis like you used to, um, she began to soften up. And of course, she had got her pet and to help cope with, you know, having somebody around to be able to be a companion for her. And uh, overall, she was able to soften up towards the end. So I did find out fairly um, contra. Well, I found that kind of odd. You know, a lot of people was talking about she had an attitude and they didn't like her mentality on there. But unless you are in that predicament of always coming in second place and always losing, you wouldn't have that same type of attitude as well as come on guys we need to get this work done and we need to show up show out and then overall they were able to win at the end so um there is time for playing and there is time for um uh working so yeah i like jada y'all period point blank <laughs> um so I did peep that people who don't make it to TVCC, they will go to Navarro and try out and will make it because their coaching styles are different too. Uh, you have a male coach at TVCC and then you have a female coach at Navarro. Um, now, one of the teammates that was at Navarro that is a fly girl, 
she was so used to having all girl stunt group which is you know having a, a two basemen and a spot girl in the back and she was not used to guys um a guy stunt group or um a guy and a girl or two guys she wasn't used to that so she had to get adjusted to that and then of course um so you have navarro with a woman coach and then you have tvcc with the male coach of course the discipline is different with both of them with tvcc uh if you're playing around too much he'll discipline you with uh with um uh, going up and down i would say the correct term for it but youtube but you're gonna be sprinting up and down the basketball field uh did i say field up and down the basketball court <laughs> you're gonna be sprinting up and down the basketball court until you are able to come together as a team and then take the take it seriously as far as like getting the work done and being to get out in a timely manner compared to navarro you have um she's she's strict in her own right as well however um uh, there's a little bit more leniency and but she is quick to um she is quick to switch you out if you're not executing the job effectively so overall the coach is going to do what is best for the team so even though you are on the mat now, you still got to keep your position in order to stay on the mat. Cause she has plenty of replacements compared to TVCC. He doesn't have too many uh, replacements as far as like switching people in case um, something happens. So yeah, I did peep that game. Um, and another thing I peeped that was the community was now starting to recognize now that the series is getting recognition the teams especially navarro is getting a uh, worldwide recognition um national recognition at the most but i'm pretty sure worldwide as well uh now you got some head honchos trying to rub shoulders with the coach as well so i was like mm -hmm. now season one it was like well we just mind our own business over here uh we only see them whenever they come compared to now it's all it's like so what's going to happen with the team and what do you feel how do you feel about the season coming up hmm funny how things work y'all funny how things work so um yeah that was a whole mess in itself <laughs> <laughs> and then another thing uh, with the Navarro team, especially people on the mat versus people not on the mat. People that are not on the mat, they're there to support the team and step in whenever something happens. And then people on the mat, you know, there was a lot of complaining. And of course, you're going to complain because your body hurts. You're mentally exhausted and stuff like that. But um it's almost like i have to say this for people that are on that are not on the mat it's just like being injured so picture yourself you were on the mat and you got injured and then now you had to sit out now you have to support and you're wishing and wishing to get back on the mat so it's a mental game so i would have to say for the folks on the mat um just continue supporting the team it's okay the time will come and that it's a mental game it's all about that mental game you're always going to be there you're um you're still on the team so um with that being said just be ready when the time comes because the time could come in the blink of an eye okay now um i did see season two it was a little bit more focused on tvcc of course they were switching back and forth to see the um as far as like the comparison of both teams and how they're um going about with practicing um for the competition 
<laughs> but this time we got a little bit more background with the TVCC uh, uh, team, the rival team, as well as coach. So, TVCC, they are located in Athens, Texas. Their mascot is the Cardinals. Uh, the Navarro team, their mascot is the Bulldogs, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Both of them have the same colors, too. I'm like, mm, ah, gosh. But it happens. Uh, there are 11 time championship winners at the moment, at that time, but now there are 12 because of their winning, um, because of their win of uh, last year's competition um, in 2021. Uh, their head coach is Bronte Johnson. Um, he's a Tex Florida uh, Floridian. Uh, he calls Texas home, but he always have Florida in his heart. And I kind of tell, I, I kind of tell that he was, uh, he had that Florida in him because, you know, that discipline, that discipline factor, and the, and that get got energy. Okay, <laughs> so. He grew up in Ocala, uh, Ocala, Florida, if I'm pronouncing that, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Ocala, Florida, he didn't grow up, um, he didn't have much growing up, um, and it tends to happen this way when there are small towns, the sports are the avenue, they are the ticket out of the town into better opportunities, so yeah, I... I totally understand from that standpoint um, and he said he grew up with a neighborhood disciplinarian we don't have those nowadays because people <laughs> we don't have neighborhood disciplinary uh, disciplinarians these days because people are quick to call um, call on folks but um, I feel like that that should be incorporated to some extent now just how things are happening these days um he was an all-around coach he still is an all-around coach he tumbles he stunts um he represented the usa cheer uh cheer team multiple times at their champ at the world championships so that's what i meant by in the previous video for season one that there is room for opportunity for a professional but it's slim to none it's usa cheer that's like professional realm uh if you are qualified and able and eligible to try out for that team and go for the championships on that end um he stated that his parents split when he was an infant and there was a household of 12 in a four bedroom apartment. And it kind of relate, uh, once he was explaining his background, it, there are some similarities in Ladaria's situation with Coach Johnson's situation. So I did kind of um, peep that out to, to that aspect. So, um, I'll probably do a little bit more in-depth video when it comes to like the character development on on the people as far as like the the college hunger the uh, lifestyle yeah because everybody's lifestyle was different I did see another tweet that mentioned about um, they wanted they want the series to focus more on the cheer aspect instead of people's background but they do that just so you can be able to connect with at least one of the characters um one of the people if not all of them within the series it, so they want you to understand that not everything glitters is gold to that capacity so everybody has a different background that they came from. But um, Coach Johnson's mentality is you come as you want to be the best. Come as you want to be the best. Not famous because in other words, you are unteachable at that point. So he wants people basically um, that is going to do, give it they all, period. 
He's not looking for, no, I want to be famous because of this or clout chasers. He's not looking for those. He's looking for people that is actually going to execute the job so he can win. Okay? That's Those are the people that he is looking for that is going for his team. That want or that is trying out for his team. Um, Because with his recruiting is um, based on... Come as you want to be the best. Compared to Navarro's coach is, you know, she's looking for potential. You know, it, you may have some, you may have it, and then you probably have some things to still work on that is teachable to be at the capacity that she wants you to be. So yeah, there are different recruiting aspects between both coaches, and there are different disciplinary aspects for both coaches from my eyes from the outside looking in but i appreciate both of them because um one of the teams navarro that program had to start from ground up compared to tvcc that program was already established winning championships already so yeah you you get the vibes whenever you view the second season um I do like the quality about Coach Johnson asking the, his team what were their goals and aspirations and what are things that they can work on as far as like being uh, number one again. I did like that aspect. And as I stated before, my key highlight players are uh, Jerron, uh, Jada, the Weenies, and Angel Rice. Oh my gosh, that girl. Woo! That girl can tumble. She is the beast, hands down. Okay, she tumbles. She uh, stunts. She's like me when it comes to like um, being built to where you you're like default. Um, you're like a default stunt person. Woo! When when they introduced Angel Rice, girl, I was like. I was like, throw it away. End game. They got the best. <laughs> TV, TVCC, they recruited the best. Uh, they, As they stated uh, in the series, they recruited. Uh, they had a good recruiting uh, season for the rookies as well. They had a lot of good rookies. So, yeah. Angel Rice, girl, you... You are baby. Woo! Her and Jada, girl, uh, nothing to be played with when it comes to stunning, all right? Woo! And and tumbling. Boy, oh my gosh, I was blown. I was getting goosebumps when she was tumbling. Because I have that. I remember, well, I still do. I have that, um, that have that stamina to where you can flip so many times to where um people can hardly tell what uh movements you're doing so yeah boy when they introduced angel rice i was like girl oh period i was like in game i already knew they was gonna win when they recruited her um but yes as i stated before in the previous video i think i stated it in the highlights in the beginning 
I did appreciate the aspect that the guys, <coughs> um, specifically the wieners, um, or the weenies, I think they were called the weenies, not the wieners, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I did appreciate the aspect that they added more emotion to the routine um, to be able to get things done, show that, um, show that spirit. Um, and then lastly, when it comes to last highlight is when they were at competition. This was, this was on the eighth episode, if I'm not mistaken. Um, letting, and this was with the Navarro team. Um, they wrote down letting go of their fears and then they put it in a bottle and then they threw it in the water as a sign of cleansing out letting go they were there was a lot of beach scene elements um due to the fact that the competition is in daytona beach florida but there was a lot of beachy scenes so it was also giving me overall with uh season two it was giving redemption purification cleansing energy uh gaining your confidence back as well um because that was a lot of things that was the main thing that most of the teammates were experiencing was the confidence level and being able to take criticism and stuff like that because um either they're not used to it or uh, they had to adapt to it. So I did like that aspect of Navarro doing that, putting all their fears into a bottle and throwing it out in the water. I think everybody should do that in general, just writing things out, especially your fears, um, your goals and aspirations, and you either burn it or just put it in the bottle and throw it in the water or just let the water wash through um, make sure whenever you're using an item that you're writing to help cleanse that is like environment friendly because of all the stuff that's going on with mother nature and the irregularities of the weather and how things are operating nowadays so yeah that was a pretty good element so yeah final thoughts final thoughts is um i would like to see next season a little bit more in depth with tvcc um um and also i also would like after i think after season four after they wrap up with season four um hopefully they will do a little bit more in depth uh with tvcc I would like for them to still continue on with the series with different colleges, um, universities, and JUCO colleges, um, especially Ju JUCO colleges in my opinion because uh, JUCO college do not get the respect that they uh, give uh, compared to Ivy League and four-year university institutions. I think a little... I think y'all need to continue on this series and add two more rival teams to the sector and see how their operations is going as far as like how they come um, uh, within that competition realm, how they, or within the football uh, season realm, how they operate, how they prepare and stuff like that. That way, you know, we can get a little bit more insight into the cheer world um, I I don't know why, but whenever they were doing, whenever they was doing the press runs for um the cheer, you know, for us like gaining recognition with the series, it was I don't know, it was given like I know y'all seen cheerleaders before when it comes to like the folks interviewing and stuff. I was like. Get get out of here with that mess. <laughs> get out of here with that mess. Don't act like you ain't never seen no cheerleaders before. That's what is definitely was given when folks was doing uh when they was doing press runs. That was that was a little bit aggy for me. I was like, 
um I was I was liking the fact that they was getting the recognition that they deserve and stuff like that but at the same time it, the media was putting it out there like it was like it, it's the new thing and I'm like this thing has been established what took you so long to grasp it there's been plenty of times where a team's been going to competition and it's sad that it had to take a docu-series on Netflix to be able for teams to get the recognition that they deserve. I mean, it was just absurd to me. I, I'm sorry. It was giving fakery for me. <laughs> but um, overall, I think that is all that I have for you guys. That is.